Hi, my name is Shashan Kalanathi, and I am a data analyst who makes videos to show you guys the day in the life of a data analyst. Thank you guys so much for all of your support over the past couple of months. We've reached 10,000 subscribers recently, and you know, as is tradition with many YouTubers, I decided to do a Q&A where I got a couple of questions from uh, people from all over the world. So I guess let's just get right into it. So, okay, Kadar Balarao uh, asked, Hi, I want to pursue a career as data analyst. I am working on my SQL Python as well as data biz softwares. My question to you as a data analyst, do I need to study data structures? Like, will it be asked in interviews? So I would say it depends. Um, I went to a, con I, I actually interviewed for a company where the person interviewing me for a data uh, scientist position actually was a software engineer. And he asked me a lot of questions on data structures. But the position I have currently, I was never asked those uh, kinds of questions. I think that you should learn them anyways, as it is, they are fundamental to any just like good understanding of how uh, development works, which is an important skill to eventually develop as an analyst. All right, a cool Joshi. Um, oh, and I should also say, since you said you're learning Python, not, not all analysts have to know Python and R and stuff, but like since you are learning it, you should learn data structures anyways. A cool Joshi. After learning basics of data analysts, Excel, SQL, Python, Tableau, what projects should we work on to add to our resume to get an internship or job? Okay, so a lot of people, what they'll do is that they will just kind of like try and ask for a boilerplate project that they should do. I am very much of the opinion that you should find something you're interested in, collect data on it, and document everything you do. Be like, okay, I did this to collect the data, it was this hard. So for example, I really like cars. So I would actually uh, do something like maybe go to um, uh, the National Highway Safety uh, and Traffic Administration. Or something. It's, they're basically the guys that like uh, ensure car safety in the United States, get crash data from a bunch of cars, and then run analytics on those on that crash data. Because um, you could talk about web scraping, for example, how do you actually get the data? You could talk about um, how you found the data. What you want out of a project is something that you can easily show someone, so a visualization is very important, and something that you can easily, um, that you're passionate about, in my opinion and something that you can also um, talk in depth about. So if you collect the data yourself for something versus some calculator project, which is what everyone does, everyone does calculator projects, um, it'll be a lot more interesting to an interviewer. After data analyst, what would be a better path, machine learning engineer or data scientist? I personally am going to be a data, trying to be a data scientist. Um, so I read, I was listening to this tremendous podcast, um, how to get a, build a career in data science, where they basically talk about the three different types of data scientists there are. So they kind of said like, there's this greater field of data science, which um, I use the word analytics for that, but they call it data science. And in that you have what you call data science analysts. So that's kind of like what I am and what I do on my channel. A lot of it's like that kind of work. They're the people who are like getting, uh, getting data from different data sources, putting it all together and like creating a uh, deliverable on that, like a uh, dashboard or something. Uh, basically, data is scattered and they gather it, analyze it, and, de and then deliver a deliverable. Um, that's a data science analyst. Then there's a data science machine learning engineer. Um, and that's someone who basically their whole job is to fine tune machine learning algorithms, productionalize them, et cetera, et cetera, in order to make sure that they're actually operational. Um, and those guys work really, really heavily in the machine learning space. And then you have, um, I forgot what the other one was, but basically it was a data scientist who is a bit more general, that more specialized than an analyst and more general than a machine learning engineer. I think it depends on what you want to do. Um, if you want to make more money, then I think machine learning engineer will probably make you more money, but it'll also put you in more of a box. Um, the thing I like about data scientists, for example, if you're looking for a title, is that it's very general and you can kind of like attach whatever experience you want to that if you're applying for jobs. So um, that's a really interesting question, but it's also like incredibly personal. Okay, Harris Lamb. I'm struggling to break into data analyst positions after doing a boot camp with a few real world projects. I do have STEM degrees. Um, I'm a chemistry degree myself, uh, but no actual real world experience. Okay. What advice can you shed in this aspect? If I ever land some job, I will be using your videos as a reference. I will indeed be contributing to your Patreon then. I really want to know how to get a landed data position somewhere. So Harris, first of all, um, I feel you. Um, when I first started, I graduated college in 2017, and I didn't have a job for over a year. Um, but you know, and I, I, I would, um, uh, at the risk of sounding a bit uh, um, arrogant, I'm, you know, I think I've accomplished quite a bit in uh, the time that I have been employed. So, 
I would say first and foremost, don't get discouraged. It doesn't matter when you start, just that when you start, you're going at it hard and you're really working hard at it. Uh, to actually answer your question though, um, okay, real world experience. I, you know what you could do? You could join Upwork. Um, it depends on what skills you have, right? Um, so for example, like say you, if you know Python, for example, or R, you can go to Upwork and you can do an, any number of jobs on that website and then let, like have that as experience. Or go like, if you have a family member or something, maybe go like work for them for a little bit and just do some analytic stuff for them and call that experience. Um, I knew someone, um, there was a middle-aged lady I knew who um, she had spent a lot of her um, uh, uh, life as a stay-at-home mom but in that time she was doing like you know odd jobs here and there and, and then she eventually decided to go and become a business analyst but when she applied for her first BA job she was able to actually like really talk about all the experience of like the different stuff she'd done in that time as real-world experience and she had the education to do it as well um, so I would say on your resume really try and like like exaggerate the uh, amount of like real-world experience that you have um, it's not amazing, but at the end of the day, at least in the U.S., your resume is like what gets your name through the door. Um, and you do what you need to do to get the get the interview. As long as you can do the job, in my opinion, say whatever you. As long as you can do the job, and you're not just outright lying. Um, for example, saying like I, I have been uh, I have implemented 30 machine learning algorithms or a machine learning algorithm at a major Fortune 500 company when you've done nothing of the sort. Um, you know, I, I I think that you'll be perfectly fine. Um, it's it's a tough game out there. Um, and I, I would definitely recommend um, putting in a lot of real world experience into your resume. That being said, I think I'll release a video showing you guys how I structured my resume because I actually, um, me and a lot of other like technical people I know don't actually know how to format resumes. I went to school at Emory University where um, I was friends with a lot of business school people. Those guys know how to structure resumes to get jobs. So I might do a video where I talk about their uh, resume tips or something in that. Okay. Uh, Joao Dantas, uh, Dantas, I'm guessing it's a Portuguese name, says, hi, congratulations. Can you freelance as a data analyst or scientist and how? Upwork.com. Um, in my opinion, it is the premier website in order to freelance as a data analyst or scientist. What? So I actually freelance myself right now, right? And I use a combination of Upwork and connections that I've built over the years. Uh, what happens is as I'm leaving a company, I will tell people that I do freelancing and then I will sometimes get clients from there and then on Upwork, I'll get some clients and then whenever uh, I can with other people, I'll just like drop in there. It's not the most gracious thing. It's not the most socially acceptable thing to do, but it gets you clients. Um, so I would say like, uh, don't be annoying about it, but like kind of drop it wherever you can with people you know and you'll get, you'll start to accumulate clients. Um, and then Team Survival, congratulations, how can I start as a freelancer data analyst, same thing. Elwin Mentoram, where can we find projects related to Python, SQL, Tableau? Because after learning from your video, I believe doing more hands-on work will improve the learning curve. Uh, congrats, by the way, for the 10K. Thank you so much, Elwin. Um, all right, so, where can we find projects? So th that's the thing, right? Like, I think a project, I think the best projects um, are the ones that you are interested in yourself. Um, so I would say find something you're interested in. Again, like I'll give you the example of cars, right? Um, and, and just ask yourself a question. And don't be worried about the complexity of the project. I know it, as you start to learn more, you'll like look at it and you're like, oh, this is too simple. This is not good enough. Um, don't worry about that. Just do something and then keep iterating on it. Keep adding on it. So for example, how many crashes were there in the US uh, year over year? Just plot that. Okay, what cars got into the most crashes? Okay, what type of cars got into the most crashes? Okay, what about sales figures of those? Like, how do I normalize that with sales figures? So maybe GM cars get into a lot of car crashes, but they also sell a lot of them. So you have to normalize that with um, the, uh, you have to scale that for the number of cars that they've sold too. Oh, but there's also like, um, uh, certain parts of the country that get into more accidents. Maybe GM cars are sold more over there. So what I would recommend to you, think of a subject you're interested in, sports, cars, uh, I don't know, anything really, um, and then ask yourself a super basic question. Then go answer that question. Go get the data, you need to answer that question. Then ask yourself another question, and another question, and another question. And that's how you create a project, at least in my opinion. Um, and I only say that because I've done, I've interviewed candidates before that have like done these calculus projects and stuff like that. And like, it's good. Like, I mean, if someone did a calculus project, it's good, I'll hire them. But it's boring as hell. You know, everyone does it. Um, and maybe it's just me, but like as an interviewer, I definitely will like put a lot more attention on someone who's done something special than someone who like has done the same thing everyone else has done. 
Um, and that's why I think you should do a project on something you're interested in. Congrats on the 10, okay, so Artas13 says, congrats on 10K, love your videos, keep on going. For the question part, what are your hobbies? Are you into reading? If so, what are your top three books so far? Uh, thank you so much, Artas. I, I actually, I love these personal questions. I'm, I'm really trying to like get my channel to be a little bit more vloggy at some point in time, but not for now, don't worry about it. We're still gonna keep doing analytics work. Um, my hobbies, okay, so it'll actually sound really sad, but I spend a lot of my time on this analytics stuff because um, between my full-time job, my uh, analytics like freelancing, and this YouTube channel, I really don't have many hours left in the day for uh, many hobbies. I don't recommend doing what I do. Um, even I'm not particularly like psyched about the lack of free time that I have. It's not great, um, but I see, I, I'm very lucky to like be hitting some good success in all three of these things right now. So I don't wanna let off the gas pedal quite yet. Um, so, you know, you'll see like I'm at 10K subscribers right now. I don't want to like let up the gas pedal on YouTube because like this could grow. Um, but as far as like hobbies are concerned, uh, I'm, I'm definitely into reading. Um, and I love like, I love traveling. I haven't been able to do much of that during coronavirus. Um, and I'm a huge like foodie. Uh, I will eat literally anything. Um, so my goal is always to travel to two new countries per year. Last year I was able to because I traveled right before the coronavirus uh, pandemic. So I went to Romania and Hungary. And the year before that it was Malaysia and Panama. Uh, and then this year, I would really like to go to Korea. And then uh, maybe Chile. I have really wanted to go to Chile for a while. Um, just see what's going on over there. Um, and as far as reading, what are your top three books so far? So let me pull up my Kindle. So I'm actually reading a book. I'm reading two books right now. Um, the Reckoning by David Halberstam and The Code by Margaret O'Mara. And the code is about Silicon Valley and the remaking of America, basically how like Silicon Valley was created. And The Reckoning was created by uh, David Halberstam. And it is about the fall of the American auto industry in relation to the Japanese auto industry. So again, like I keep saying, I'm a huge car nerd. Um, and um, it always fascinates me how the Japanese car industry was able to so thoroughly pummel the American car industry. Like the American car industry has never recovered um, as far as market share is concerned since the 1960s like, basically. Um, and it only gets worse as like more and more competent players enter the industry, like the uh, Koreans in the form of Hyundai and Kia. And then, I mean, eventually I think China will enter the American automotive market too with like Geely and other uh, manufacturers. But uh, I guess they have enough demand on their own, in their own country to like not really worry too much about us. But those are two, two books I'm reading so far. Um, and let's see, what's a, what's a third really good book? I, oh, you know what? The Dictator's Handbook. Um, so I'm actually a bit of a political junkie. Um, and actually this YouTube channel you guys are watching used to be a political YouTube channel, but I kind of gave up on it after I realized like, it's it's very difficult to, it, it would be very difficult for me to like, add value in my opinion as a political YouTube channel. So I kind of like gave up on that. But there's a great book called The Dictator's Handbook, which really fundamentally changed my way of thinking about how, um, uh, foreign powers work and, and and like the idea of interest and like why for example do we see so many people like you know dictators and stuff in the world doing such bad things uh, this book's a great uh, uh, covers that topic really really well uh, CGP Ray also did a video on it that's how I got introduced to it okay next level asked two questions do you have a CS degree no I do not I have a chemistry degree um, and then how did you get your first job um, Okay, so I actually went over this in my interview on the How to Get a Job in Data Analytics podcast. I'll probably link that below. Um, and my first job, uh, so I was actually an intern in IT at Interstate Batteries, um, and I hated it. They didn't give me any work. Uh, I couldn't stand it. So I actually went to the sixth floor, because I just done a small like course on supply chain management. And I'm like, okay, this seems cool. I went to the sixth floor and started like just asking people, hey, do you have work, do you have work, do you have work, do you have work for me? Eventually I got to a team that like took pity on me and they gave me a stack of like business cards and it said like, put this in an Excel document. I came back the next day, everything in an Excel document. A director saw me and recommended me for a job actually. She's like, oh, this guy's obviously a hard worker. Uh, and that's how I got my first job. It happened to be in analytics. It could have been in anything. I actually think I would have been, I would have made a tremendous salesperson, but I got into analytics. Um, and so I wasn't really aiming to be here. Um, I, it kind of just happened for me. Um, but I will say my brother, um, told me this great quote before or once before which is a uh, like it was a lucky break but luck is when um, preparation meets opportunity um, and you know I mean I, I was working I was like asking people for like work and stuff that was like kind of the preparation and the opportunity just happened to be that a job was opening up um, so I would definitely like leave that leave you guys with that uh, tip 
100%, a lot of success that um, you have will be attributed to luck. A lot of, almost all the success I have, I've had is attributed to luck. But to some extent, I was prepared, prepared to take advantage of a lucky opportunity that came my way. All right, Stefania um, Auguste asked me, congrats on hitting 10K. Can you share some examples of when an analyst should use Python to solve a business problem? Um, so we, we, I was at um, uh, an old company and we needed to get shipping rates um, for packages across the country using uh, FedEx. So FedEx doesn't actually publish, at least at the time, they didn't publish these tables for us to use. Um, so what I did is I created a web scraper that would actually go onto their website and um, uh, input a bunch of different like, like, like criteria and then it would create, we, we created our own table of like FedEx rates that was reasonably accurate. Um, obviously stuff changed from day to day, but you could like basically ping them a bunch of times and the website wasn't advanced enough to stop us from like web scraping a bunch of data off of them. So um, that was one situation. Um, any data manipulation that um, can't be handled in SQL. So I'd say a, a large chunk of data manipulation can be handled in SQL, but eventually you'll get to a point where it's kind of like um, running statistics on a data in SQL can be very difficult. Um, you specifically want to use it uh, after you've manipulated your data in SQL, and you need to like start running statistics on it, start creating graphs, um, and the data is too large to fit into Excel. So for example, I'm, I'm working on this project right now where the data sets are like 14 million rows big, and even when I compress them, it's like 100K to like a million rows. Um, 100,000 rows can chug your Excel as well, um, depending on how many columns you have. Um, and that's kind of like where Python comes in. It's um, and, and or, or any like programming language. So I'd say like in situations where you have a lot of data, that can be something you want to do. And then Roman IAC, this is our last question. Congrats, maybe sharing your journey on how you made the switch into data analytics like, slash science and what your portfolio looked like when you made the switch, if you had one, or what a good one would look like. Um, I'll see if I can find a good one. I don't, I personally don't have a great, I don't have a great analytics portfolio. I'm kind of trying to make YouTube my analytics portfolio personally, but I would recommend most people um, if you want to build an analytics portfolio, go to uh, Google Data Studio and build a dashboard over there and put that dashboard onto GitHub, uh, have some code on GitHub, and um, scrape some data from the web and have that on GitHub. I'd say like have that on GitHub and use Google Data Studio to get like a free dashboard out in the wild. Um, and my journey of how I made the switch into data analysts and data analysis and data science, I actually have a video, uh, an interview with the How to Get a Job in Analytics podcast. Um, where I go over that, and I'll probably have a separate video where I just like talk about like my, like I do it entirely on my own. Uh, that way, it's on my channel for my viewers as well. Um, but thank you guys so much for 10,000 subscribers. I never thought I would reach this level of subscribers um, as quickly as I did, and you know it's all thanks to you guys. And if you have any other questions, comments, concerns, any ideas for future videos, please leave them in the, in the section below. If you want to uh, support the work that I do, please like. Uh, liking is great for the YouTube algorithm. Please subscribe. Subscribing is good so I know that uh, I'm actually growing and my channel is actually getting bigger. And uh, if you really can, if you can support my, my Patreon, that's a tremendous way to directly support the work I do and uh, make sure I can keep making videos like this. Thank you guys so much.